to the picnic this side of town. Cool. Cause because I know it is a bit of a well, it's a bit of a trek first of all, and also you have to strategically navigate your way around drama students in order to get here. So, yeah. but you you managed all right. Yeah, it's all right. I, you know, it is. Drama students are funny, but I used to be a drama student, so did you I can't up, really be too. Did you come up to the fringe and do stuff? Like, oh no, I know I was never that uh, dramatic. Uh, just at school, I was always in drama group at school, mm-hmm. did plays and that. I was in uh, Joseph's. Amazing technical dream course and a oh, side story and things like that. What did you play in Joseph? I played Pharaoh. But, oh, uh, excellent. Pharaoh is supposed to be played as Elvis, mm-hmm. but in my school it was in it was around the time Freddie Mercury had a hit with uh, the Great Pretender, so my drama teacher decided to change the Pharaoh part to Freddie Mercury instead of Elvis. So I had to dress in like spandex tights and a t-shirt and. How was it? Did you that feel? Was great, yeah, it was brilliant. brilliant. You, I love you, musicals. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, it, oh, was that one of your loves as well? I do like them. Yeah, I don't go on about it much, but yeah, I was like musicals. Would you go on to the West End and watch one like a like a big commercial? One? I haven't seen many because it's. You know, I don't live in London, and it's uh, quite a long way to go, and it's quite expensive. But a few I've seen, I've really enjoyed. I saw Cats. Mm. which is brilliant I don't like cats particularly but there's no actual cats in it it's just people dressed up So it's the book if you like the idea of cats rather yeah, yeah. than actual cats I'm a bit allergic to real cats so, um, and can you sing? are you yeah anybody can sing <laughs> especially in music because you don't have to be able to be a brilliant singer you just have to be able to put a song across don't you like Fagan and um, Oliver he's not a brilliant singer is he but uh, it's about character isn't it in musicals that's why that's why I enjoy them do you have any aspirations in maybe not musicals but that kind of thing I'd love to yeah I'd love to do uh, stage stuff And there is a rumour that we might do Rocky Horror Picture Show at one time well not Picture Show obviously just the Rocky Horror Show but uh, that might still happen at some point I've always wanted to play Frank and Furta. Okay. Since I was a, well, not a kid, but a teenager. So you keep your options open. Is it? Uh, do you think you'll always do stand up though? Is that your workhorse? That's. I don't know. Love, I, I started doing street theatre. That's what I. At school, I wanted to be a clown when I was little, and then I wanted to be an actor. And then when I left school, I did street theatre all through my twenties, which was in the nineties, and uh, I was a clown as well for a bit. So, and then I got in a stand up. I didn't get in the stand until I was like thirty one. Um, so I just love performing. I, I think the more different types of performance you do, the better. The, you know, one lends to another. So stand up helps you do street theatre. Street theatre helps you do stand up, and vice versa. And do you still do it now, street theatre? Ah, no, no, no. I'm terrified <laughs> to do the things I used to do in my twenties. But but you you did do it. I did do it. It was what great. What was your act? What was well, I, I worked for a, a company called the Natural Theatre Company, was based in Bath. And we it wasn't like circus based street theatre, it was more kind of improvisational characters and just odd odd visual characters and we didn't pass the hat around, we kinda of got paid by events so the first event was the Gateshead Garden Festival in nineteen ninety and then did events all over the world and um one of the biggest was probably the World Expo in Lisbon in nineteen ninety eight. We were there for five months just doing four shows a day of just odd English characters kinda. Of. We did a lot of gigs to promote uh, England and Britain and for the British Council across the world. So we did a gig in Canada and did a lot of gigs in Japan. Um, that was brilliant, brilliant fun. The thing that frightens me about street theatre mm. more than passing the hat is building a crowd. It just yeah. the idea of it. Just well, we did peripatetic street theatre, which just means wandering about. <laughs> so uh, a lot of people follow you around. Especially uh, when you do it in Europe and that. We did street theatre festivals in Finland and it was like hundreds of people following us around to see what we did. But in England they have kind of a... Well, in, in, in Britain they have a bit of a poor attitude towards it. They have more of an attitude of, do you get paid to do this? Mm. Um, which we did. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just... Uh, when you go across the world and that, it's fun to do and people love it and it's just something that's... Street theatre is great because it takes theatre out of theatres and it, it, it makes it access, accessible to people who don't really who think theatre is a bit of its own arse and don't really want to go. And, Which you know. it is sometimes. Oh, definitely, yeah. 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 Um, and street theatre is like there, it's bang, and it's in front of you and you can watch it for two minutes and then it's gone and you've had a little experience and you go and tell your friends about it. And mm, it feels the best, the best ones are the people who think it's real, mm. which you get a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> So your show this year, uh, mm. is it? Is there a, a big idea around it, a big theme around it, or are you doing your 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 thing? It's just me being an idiot for an hour, really. 
the last couple of years I've been I've, I've had I've been depressed the last couple of years and I did a show two years ago about depression um, which was alright but I was depressed so you know I didn't appreciate it that were much you, and, so you were depressed while you were doing it as well yeah 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 I thought it would cure me depression but it didn't I had to go to the doctor for that and counselling and things but uh, then so last year I did a show which uh, I had a kind of show ready and then I had no confidence in it so I had to throw it out and then I did a show where I just got people to write stuff on bits of paper and just made up stuff around that um, which was nice to do but uh, I couldn't do it this year but luckily this year just a few months ago I started coming out of my depression and that too counselling with a, uh, where I moved back to Newcastle and um, so this year I had a lot more confidence in just being stupid and my show is just really really stupid and uh it's going really well, people are getting into it, having a laugh, and um, it's nice to be an idiot, and it's nice to let other people be stupid, and uh, all the audience get to be stupid as well, which is nice. And so it's like a community feel to it, they, they're involved with the show? Yeah, they're involved, I have the windows open, I have the I let the light in because I'm in a room which is on the first floor, and it's got big windows, a circular room. Um, stand two, is it? Stand two, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't see why you should lose electricity and sit in the dark when it's light outside and the sun's shining. So I just let the sun in and we can all see each other. And It takes about five minutes for people to get used to it, but by the end you've got that kind of we're all in it together mentality. And uh, Is any part of that, because it feels a bit weird, you just being on stage and everyone and it all being about you and mm. you just talking and everybody listens, is that a dynamic you don't like? I think it's... Uh, Oh, oh, <laughs> it's all right. Playing rugby. There's only two of them though, so they're not playing it that well. Uh, no, it's. Uh, I think it's just convention that you sit in the dark and shine lights on yourself when you do when you do stand up, and I understand why because it's normally done at night in basements and things like that. But, but if it's not, why why should you? And mm. I think it just takes a, a few minutes for people to adjust to to the fact that it's not like that. And I like to see the audience. I like to see the reactions and. It it's, feels a bit weird sometimes when you're standing in the dark getting lights shone in your face, but like being interrogated. Uh, so it's nice to see everybody, and it freaks you out. It, it, it shouldn't work. Uh, people say it shouldn't work because everybody can see everybody is aware of everybody and is self conscious, but for some reason it does work, and I don't know why, but people just get into it. And so, so have you always it. have you always done that? Is that or is that a new? I've a done new it for thing? the last few years since I've been in Stand Two because the opportunity is there to do it. So I figure. Why not? Uh, and I don't mind because I've done street theatre. I'm quite happy. That's that's a good ground for stand up because one of the things I don't have a problem with is standing up in front of people, and I can do it anywhere, anytime, and I'm not bothered. Um, mm. It's not a nerve thing. No, no, I just love it. I love having fun and having a laugh. And I think when I, it's quite an intimate venue, it's only fifty seat seat and it's a round room, and um, it's actually a SNP meeting place yeah. during the rest of the year. Um, but it's great and we, uh, I think there's just a sense of togetherness when you're in there and doing it and as, as, like I say people say it shouldn't work but I think those people are people who don't have never really seen it tried and mm. It, mm. Work, it works fine I think. But with it being like a thing that you really enjoy and that you really love when you did go through the depression stage was that something that maybe temporarily lifted you out of it or was it just you were When I was far? depressed the only time I ever had any inspiration was when I was on stage so that's why last year I did a show where I just kind of made stuff up well, in, in the show because outside of the show I didn't have any confidence in my comedy, I didn't have any confidence in what I was coming up with. Um, the, the, when you're physically Except performing. when I was on stage, that was I was in, uh, in the zone, I suppose you would say, mm. even though that's a cliche. <laughs> I don't know where the zone is, but uh, <laughs> it's I live somewhere. there now. I'm there, I'm there all the time now. So. Um, but yeah, so, so that's why I did it. I've always felt... Alive on stage, and my drama teacher used to say that was the only time I came alive was when I was on stage, and um, and that's the way it's been for the last few years. But now I'm starting to feel better a lot more of the time, and I'm not. I, I would say I'm not depressed anymore. I'm not. You know, I can always become depressed again, but at the moment I'm not depressed. I've come out of it, and it's just really nice to be at the festival and not be depressed and seeing it through clearer eyes and. I had, had problems with uh, drugs, I used to smoke a lot of weed all the time and when I first started it was just kind of a social thing and then it became a habit and became a problem and I was in the house 
I spent the six chunks a day without tobacco and just hiding in my bedroom and hiding away from the world. I would go out and do gigs and come straight back home again. And it became a problem, so I had to go. And that, that was why, when I moved back to Newcastle, I got counselling from the North East Council on Addictions and they helped me to, to give that up. So, again, this is the first Edinburgh for a few years where I haven't been smoking any weed and just much clear headed, much more clear headed. and. People say I'm more sociable, easier to talk to, things like that. So you think it's definitely for the better you're in a much better place? Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's... Uh, we say I'm not I'm not massively anti-drugs or anti-anything, but I think if you do stuff to access, it's bad for you. Um, and the same with weed, the same with drinking, the same with smoking. If you if you do it occasionally um, as a social thing, then it's fine, but as soon as it becomes something that... My life just became moments between joints, mm. and so... The structure, of my, the structure of my life is all about drugs, whereas now it's not. It's mm. it's about having fun and being alive and enjoying the festival. So I love the festival. So your show, uh, it's what was it called? It's called Marmaduke Spatula's Fucking Spectacular Cabaret <laughs> Sunshine Show. That is the best. That is genuinely the best title I've heard cool. so far. Yeah, it's got a <laughs> song a, at the start, so it's better if you sing it. Oh, so it's a song at the start, song yeah. at the end. Uh, no, the, well, there is some music at the end, but I don't sing more okay. of it. Yeah, but there's there's lots of you know singing, dancing, dicking about, <laughs> prizes, games, things like that. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, and what time? Ten past seven. Stand two on uh, York Place. Thank you so much. No, for coming. thank you. It's, it's been, been fun. Help yourself to a biscuit if you I'll want. I'll have a one. half a shortbread. Go on then. <laughs> Crack shortbread. <Yeah. laughs>